Peace and Pan-Africanism, Peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism, Peace and Pan-Africanism. My apologies to Sophisticated C. My apologies to Sister Sophisticated C. My apologies to Sister Sophisticated C. Instagram ended my live again without notification. Instagram ended my live again without notification. Apologies to Sister Sophisticated C. Cut my sister right off. Let me see if I can find her. Catch back up with Sophisticated C. That girl mill, where you at? That girl mill. That girl mill, where you at? You coming in? Hey, gorgeous. Hi, we talked the other day. Yes, we did. Where you from again, Sister Mill? Columbia, South Carolina. Columbia, South Carolina. What is your take on a 50-50 rule? Can a brother step to you and say, listen, I'm struggling and I need you to help me. I love you, but we're going to have to work this thing down the middle. 50-50, can you handle that? And what if the brother says, I could take care of the whole bill, but because you earn too, it's only right that you meet me down the middle. Does your position change based on whether your man is of means or is not of means? Um, no, so, I mean, if he's my man, my, 10 times out of 10, I already know his financial situation. So um, if I decided to make him my man and he didn't have enough money to support us 50-50, that's not gonna bother me. But if he most definitely can handle the situation, handle, um, you know, we're not living out crazy, you know, try, I don't I don't live crazy, I don't have like a lavish apartment or a lifestyle or whatever the case may be, and he's like, no, I, I don't wanna support you 50-50, then no, sorry, you can't be my man. Only because I feel like a, a if a man really loves you, he's gonna wanna provide for you, point blank period. I feel like um, he's gonna want to. That's a very good point. Yeah. That's, I never, that's, you said if he really loves you and cares for you, he's gonna wanna provide 100%. Yeah. Wow, wow. But um, that's that's how I feel about it about a man. And but if his if the if he is not financially stable, I do believe if he loves you and he knows the type of woman you are, whatever the case may be, he's gonna work towards being able to take care of you. So I just I do feel like it's um, situational, um, and it just really depends depends on the man, I guess. But for me, for me, it depends on the man and the situation. Now let me push back, because some brothers might say. If we get a divorce, nine times out of 10, the courts are going to let you clean my pocket. So what's wrong with me asking you to meet me 50-50? Because if this situation ends, nine times out of 10, you're going to leave with 80 or 90%. So you mean to tell me you're going to benefit from all my money. I'm not going to benefit benefit from none of your money and when we get divorced you get everything that i have how would you respond to that why are you thinking about divorce and we because we just we either it's a reality it's like why do you think about death why do, you, um, why do you, you get insurance you're not hoping to get into a car accident but there's a strong possibility that you could get into a car accident half of all marriages in america in in divorce half of them, black mm -hmm. white purple so what's your take on that y'all don't have a prenup stay with me y'all don't have a prenup mm -hmm. and he can afford to pay all the bills mm -hmm. but you have a damn good decent job too mm -hmm. so he's saying is it fair that you benefit from my entire paycheck save all, all of yours and if we get a divorce after you benefited from my whole paycheck for 20, 30 years, you can walk off with 70, 80% of my life earnings. Is that fair to the man? No, I'm going to say it's not fair to the man, but it depends on the reason we're getting a divorce. If we are getting divorced because, um, you know, there was infidelities, sir, you're going to have to pay up because you shouldn't, you, I feel like you, you, you should have known better if it was infidelities on his part. But me being the type of female I am, I'm not even, I'm not going to want that. I just want, 
the situation to be clean. You know, we just go our separate ways. If we got kids, we're going to have to figure that out. But if not, we just go our separate ways. Um, but I don't really, I don't, it, it just, like I said, everything is situational. <laughs> I got you. For me. How do you feel about the 80% rule? Sisters who say if you can't pay at least 80% of the bills, why are you looking for marriage in the first place? Um, I don't 100% agree with it, but I don't disagree with it. I do think um, if you are looking to get married, you should be fine in a place where you're financially comfortable and you're able to take on that only because you never know what the other, what, what could happen. And I do kind of feel like that about women. Like when I go on dates, I'm not going, I don't order anything I can't pay for myself. If it come down to it, you know, I, I'm not going to do that. So I feel like, um, you know, if you can support 80%, and I know you can, but you know you don't, don't want to, and you, but you're trying to get married. I don't know. We just gonna have to either have a deeper conversation one more time, or we, you know, just gonna have to make make a decision on what we're gonna do. Have you ever but been on a date and the man asks you to pay half? He asked me to pay half. No. Okay. What's what's one or two things you're just tired? of seeing black men do in relationships what are black women what are black women tired of seeing from us uh, in relationships or just in general dating or in the relationships in general um to be honest i haven't really had that many relationships so i really can't give a honest opinion from from my point of view but um dealing with my friends and and seeing how their relationships go. I think that black men struggle with, um, I'm not gonna say being a man, but just taking that leadership role. I feel like um, a lot of black men care about what other black men think of, think about them and their decisions and what they do, how they treat their female, how they treat their, their, yeah, their females and stuff like that. So I think um, just, black men just really just need to have a mind of their own um, so we, instead, so you, you brought up something I hadn't heard before. You said black men worry too much about what other black men think about their relationship. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that there's brothers out here who would probably be a little bit more honorable and, and have a little bit more chivalry with women, but they don't want to appear like a simp? to other brothers so they might kind of disrespect or neglect the sisters because they want to appear cool and not appear simpish so they may pull back on the level of respect that they show um maybe not like the level of respect but just like um you know like he might kind of like disregard her feelings or say something out the way because he like in front of other people he don't want people but like behind closed doors he might be a completely different way um so, so, I, I have seen yeah so you saying so, so you are kind of saying that he may show you a little less respect oh, around yeah. other black men because he don't want to appear. Wait, let, let me let me say this another way. Are you, are you saying that black men don't like to show other black men when they care about a black woman? Yeah, I do feel that. Wow. Way. Uh, I don't feel like all of them are. Now, that are you way. are you I in your twenties or your thirties? I'm in my late twenties. You're in your, okay, so the brothers in their 20s, if we just dealt with the 20s, you say for them, there's a lot of peer pressure mm -hmm. that goes into how they treat you publicly. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow, that's deep. That, that that's, that's deep there. I never heard that, but I can see how that could be true. Let, let, me, let me flip this. Let me flip this, mm -hmm. uh, and this will be my last question for you, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Where can women in their 20s your age group where could they also improve like what are you seeing women your age do that 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 is unbecoming of a young black woman on the dating scene what do you wish the sisters would stop doing in their 20s honestly i i do kind of wish we would stop being so revealing be in and behaving cert, a certain way in public only because um, if we go out the house half naked, but then we get somebody talking about our butt or whatever we showing, you know, how are you going to get mad and be like, uh-uh, he disrespectful, but you're, I mean, you're revealing that, you know, I do wish that we would carry ourselves 
um, a little bit more modest. Um, I understand, you know, you're young and turnt or whatever the case may be, but um, it, you should always present yourself the way that you would want to be approached. If I want to be approached like a lady, I want to, I'm going to go out in public looking like a lady. If I want to be, I, I don't, I, if, like I said, I'm single, so I don't leave the house with a bonnet, pajamas on, things like that. Like, you know, just be more mindful of how we present ourselves in public into other well, people. Well said. My last question for you, Princess, and this is Dr. Umar just picking on my little sister. When I look at you, I see a beautiful face, those big, pretty eyes, that beautiful skin, that cute nose, them luscious lips. <laughs> Why are you wearing them eyelashes? Because you don't need them. You're beautiful. Why do you have them? Was that uh, peer pressure? No, it's not peer pressure at all. It's Why just my personal preference. You have it's thick, my... pretty eyebrows. Why do you need the eyelashes? It's... It's my personal preference. I don't like how I don't. I'm not gonna say I no, don't like how I look. To say you don't like. How I was gonna to say, say that, like but that's not that's not true. That's not true that I don't like how I look without the eyelashes. But I mean, uh, sometimes. So I don't do a lot of makeup when I when I want to okay. look, um, you know, approachable or whatever the case may be. I don't do a lot of makeup. So this is it, and I'm gonna put on some lip gloss maybe a, a, some lip liner but that's it so this is just a little enhancer but for me but you know i get but what's crazy is i honestly get the most attention when i'm completely just there just nothing okay. I, that's when i get the most attention to be honest okay. but i like eyelashes i like the way they look got you got you mom thanks for tapping in princess yeah. appreciate you have a good all night right. all right now <laughs> gotta support the young Young people support the young people. What do y'all think about the 50 50 rule? Y'all tapping in with the Prince live from Atlanta, Georgia. Shout out to all my Atlanta Africans. Shout out to all my Atlanta Africans. Who tapping in? Who tapping in? Let's go to Natasha Brown. Natasha Brown, are you going to tap in this time or are you still hiding? Natasha Brown, where you at? Natasha Brown, where you at? There you go. How hey, you doing? Dr. Oh, I'm doing well, Dr. Umar. How I'm you doing? I'm doing well, beautiful. Where you at in the world? I am in Atlanta. Oh, um, you're in Atlanta with me. All right, Queen. I what, are you, what are your thoughts on the 50-50 rule? Is it acceptable for the brothers to ask the sisters to meet them at the middle? 50% financial responsibility for both sides in the marriage. Are you comfortable with that? Why or why not? Um. So, so we're talking about at a point in the relationship where we are already married, where he's ready to ask me to be married, or where we're dating. In, in the beginning. In the, in the beginning. You know this coming in. He's being upfront coming in. I need you to meet me 50-50 down the middle. And does it make a difference to you, Queen, whether he is struggling economically when he brings you that proposal versus if he could pay the whole thing, but feel as though it's only right that you meet him down the middle because you also have a, dis a decent income. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Um, so I think that it is very, very situational. Uh, I think we're talking about a numbers game, and if we're talking strictly numbers, I don't think it's a conver conversation that can be had. So if we're if we're talking about a, a man who um, who is kind of financially well, first of all, let's talk about the numbers, because <laughs> in America, only about fourteen percent of people in America at large make more than a hundred thousand dollars. So given the fact, given that one fact given other factors like women um, and black women specifically uh, would likely make more than a black man, would likely be a little more educated than a black man. Um, all those those kind of things that contribute to the numbers specifically. I think that, that I would have to ask questions and I'd have to be open to looking at the other parts of that man. So if he's asking me to go 50-50 because he can't do it right now, then I'd have to look at what he is doing to contribute in other ways such that he's not taking away anything from our relationship. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about a person saying that at the beginning of the relationship, so I'm not talking about at the very beginning coming coming in with that because I don't know that I'd have that particular conversation. Um, so 
if he's if he's struggling, then I'd have to look at the other factors. If we're further in the relationship and say, for example, we have kids together, how is he contributing to the house in other ways? If we are trying to build a certain thing, if we're building business, if he's going to school, if he's doing this or doing that, how how is he contributing to the plan that we've put together as a unit? And I think that can that can function at any, I mean, now that I'm kind of talking it through and thinking at the same time, but I think that that can happen at any point of the relationship. If you don't got it, then what are we doing now and how are you contributing to what we're doing now? And more importantly, how are you not taken away from what I have already, from what we could be doing? And if you're not contributing at all, if you're not filling the other gaps that have that don't have anything to do with the numbers because you just don't got it, then you can't have me. So that's my opinion on that. If he does have it and he just wants me to go 50-50 just because, um, then it would it would kind of be it, it would kind of be the same thing in terms of uh of what are you what are you doing like what what are the other things that you're doing to contribute to where we're going in fact if i i may have a good job i may be able to contribute some of it but if you're are you putting me in a position to make more money con to contribute to, to contribute to the household if that makes mm -hmm. sense again what are you doing to enhance the situation overall and um, the, based on the plan that we have as a unit wherever we are in our relationship. So does that answer the question? I'm with you, I'm with you. What do you think about the 80% rule? Some women say that if you can't afford 80% of the family's expenses, you shouldn't be looking to be married anyway. Um, I think that that directly correlates to the fact that most people don't make enough money in America to take care of a whole family at all. Um, so I, 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 we can look at men who could probably do that, but the truth about those men, in my opinion, is they can have any woman that they want because they make enough money to do that. You know, um, they're kind of able to just choose at, at that point in their life. But the reality of where we are in America, uh, I think that it's definitely, it's definitely situational. The reality of where we are with our economy, the reality of where we are in terms of our mental health, of, uh, of, of the pressure that we have as women, the pressure that we have, that our men have as black men. Um, I, th I think that the 80-20 rule might be a little bit antiquated. Um, now, I, I certainly understand that most, uh, uh, well, I can't, I can't say most, but I believe that most, most men, however they look at it, are really kind of traditional. Uh, I think that it would probably hurt their ego if, if, it, if they weren't able to provide. Just like the previous lady said, um, if they really love you, they're going to want to provide for you. But again, there's a reality that's happening in America right now. Um, so at this point, the numbers, I don't think the numbers should be the number one thing. I think the numbers should be a supplement to the plan. And then whatever we do, whatever needs to happen to get that, to reach that goal, to see the plan through, let's do that. Got you. Have you ever dated outside of your race? No. Would, I, I'm sorry, you're breaking uh, up. Would you? Would I? Um, I have considered it recently. Um, but if you had asked me uh, two years ago, before I got divorced, I would have said absolutely not. But now I am back on the dating scene. And, um, and, and the truth is the pickings are just slim, like they're, they're just, they're just slim. And I live in Atlanta. So um, if you have a 50-50 chance in another city, I got about a 10% a chance in Atlanta of finding my, my person. So um, either I have to move, look outside of this city, or be open to dating um, other races. Now, I will say, I don't know how that could happen because I don't know how, like, I, I don't, I don't really relate to white people in that kind of way, you know, but but I've thought about I, the, the short answer is I've thought about it. So I don't know. I've thought about it. I've considered it. Got you. Mm -hmm. What are one or two things mm -hmm. that you're tired of seeing from black men at this stage in your life? What should black men 
have given up by now that you're still seeing? Um, lying about who they are to themselves. What you mean by that? Break that down a little bit. Um, uh, Give me again, an example. An example would be uh, being able to provide. Like the, the truth is, the average or median income for a man is about fifty thousand um, dollars. I I'm gonna kind of switch some things up about this story, but I I'll, I'll just say I was with someone. I was with someone who, when we dated, um, he paid for everything. Like he he went all out. You know, did all the things. Um, well, now, well, I can't really hide the story. So he did all the things. <laughs> then we got married, and that's when all the things kind of had to stop because he spent all his money doing all the things through the dating. You know, so, uh -huh. so uh -huh. there was that's the example. There is no, you really don't have it. So through the dating phase, you probably shouldn't have been taking me on trips. You probably shouldn't have been buying me this, buying me that, because the truth is, I just liked you in the first place. Um, so if I like you, then be honest with yourself, be honest enough with yourself to be able to say, Hey, here's where to be able to have the conversation that you're trying to have that we're having <laughs> and have that conversation, honestly. Um, because if, if you can, so, so if, I mean, and that's across the board from, from how you are, from what you have financially, from really what your mental and emotional state might be, um, even your health. Like I know people <laughs> who have gotten in relationships and um, they uh, seemed to be healthy, but they knew they were about to die. Wow. Like I've, wow. heard, I've heard those stories. Now, wow. I, said I, I know somebody, but I've heard those stories. Those stories are more common than we might think. Uh-oh, sorry, I just got home. Yeah, right. so literally it's just, knowing who you are, owning who you are, and being okay enough with that to show me who that person is so we can make real decisions about what we want from there. And then being okay with rejections, because I might not like that, but me not liking that really is okay. Or me not liking that could give you the opportunity to say, well, you see that a little bit. You see, I didn't see that um, the way you see it, Here's how I think it really is. Or you can say, um, I know you don't like this, so I'm going to try my best to change it. Mm -hmm. But if you tell me a lie, if you give me your representative, or no, let's just stick with the lies. If you, if you cannot be honest enough with yourself to be able to be honest with me, um, we're doomed from the beginning. Last question for you, Queen. Great, great, great information. In your opinion, mm -hmm. if you had to on behalf of black women, the sisterhood. Mm -hmm. If I had to vote? Yes. Mm -hmm. Would you much rather see black, black women alone after the age of 70, or would you much rather prefer they be part of a plural marriage situation? Wow. Which that... reality do you think better serves black women? Being alone as a senior? or being part of a plural marriage as a senior. Because so many of our elders, women, are mm -hmm. dying alone. And I'm just mm -hmm. wondering your thoughts on that. I mean, maybe there's some peace in that solitude, but I'm looking at the loneliness as well. And I'm okay. just wondering, mm -hmm. what do you think is better for our sisters when they get up in that age? When you say alone, because he, do you mean alone and also doesn't have family outside of a relationship? May have some family who checks in to mm -hmm. make sure everything's good. You know, bills mm -hmm. are paid, you're clean, you get to your doctors, but they really don't have any intimacy. And I don't necessarily mm -hmm. mean sexual intimacy, but that emotional intimacy with a companion of the opposite mm -hmm. sex. I think... In my opinion, again, I think it's situational. I think it depends on what kind of life that woman built for herself up to that point. So if she's built a life for herself up to that point um, uh, where she's really okay, where alone 
where what alone looks like to us outside of who she is is not the same alone that's not her definition of alone um if she's built her life up to that point and that's the case i think that she'll be fine alone but if she's built her life up in a way that necessitates another person being there i think that that she should be open to being in a in a in a poly or whatever kind of relationship that is i think that that can be an option um depending on how again how she's lived her life um, for example, if she was married for 50 or 60 years and her husband died and they had a monogamous relationship, she might be. I think that would be, okay. yeah, she would, she would definitely be okay. She, I, I, in fact, I'd, I'd put my first million dollars on that. She, she'd never go for being in a, in a, uh, in a relationship where she had to share her man. Um, so again, it's situational. I don't think that it's a bad idea though, if you need an intimacy, um, but that's just me. I'm kind of okay with those kinds of relationships, um, but again, situational. Okay. And where do you, when you look at the young sisters, 20s, 30s, early 40s, mm -hmm. where do you wish black women would do better themselves in the dating game? Like, you know, what would be your advice to the younger sisters? What are you seeing from them that you're not liking? Um, I only have one, I only have one perspective, uh, one real life perspective of that. And uh, that is a friend of mine. Uh, my college friend group is still really close. So we, we take care of our, our kids together and we know about mm -hmm. our kids. Um, his, one of his sons is in college and he's very handsome, very smart, plays football. Um, his number one challenge right now is figuring out how to have enough money to pay for a woman. What? like to pay for her life, to pay for her nails, pay for her hair, pay for this, pay for that. And I think that that is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard of in my entire life. Um, so for my younger sisters, and, and I, I do want to give you this disclaimer. I am, I'm, my next birthday, I'll be 45. I have three grandkids. I've been married, I've been divorced, been in a long-term relationship, starting in college, all that kind of thing. Um, and I know it's it's difficult to hear back in the kind of back in my day thing, but in terms of financial stability, in terms of cognitive ability, it's the same. It was the same for me as it is like nobody should expect anybody to be paying for them at that age. So my advice to sisters would be to be building yourself up at that age to be independent while you are looking for that person to be open to just having fun like if you want to go to the movies and your guy doesn't have it and you do have it say hey let's go to the movies like that's those are your fun years nobody should have to worry about taking care of you at 21 19 18 just in college it's ridiculous and um and, and stop that's all i got <laughs> thank you Thanks so much, Queen. Great information. All Thank right. You. Thank you, Dr. Mama. Mario. Have a good night. You're beautiful. Likewise. All right. We got a lot of single queens out there, brothers. What are we going to do now? What are we going to do now? Your Highness going once. Your Highness going twice. Your Highness. Where are you, Your Highness? Oh, 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 goodness. All I'm, right. I'm sitting there talking to my girlfriend. And where, where, then you I saw where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? I'm on Orcas Island, Washington. I'm on a, Washington, D.C.? Yeah, yeah. No, no, Washington State. Washington State. It's in a chain of islands. Got you. Yeah. Got you. Got you. What's your take on the 50 50 rule, sister? Can you be, are you all right? If the brother stepped to you, say, listen, I love you. Let's build this family, but I need you to go 50 50 with me. Where are you on that? Be honest. Wow. Be honest. Hold on. Let me go. Let me go on here because it's a lot of stuff going on. Um. <clears throat> well, I think my situation is a little different because I had um one of those great awakenings during COVID. I have a very small dating pool, or I had a very small dating pool. Um, you have to be black. You have to be unjabbed. <laughs> so my dating pool is very small and 
furthermore, I'm a lover. And so I tend to go for love and um, intelligence. I'm real big on, you know, that. So I think for me, um, it's never been a conversation. I've, I've heard the questions that you've asked, have women dated other races? I have, both of my kids are half Caucasian. I got pregnant at 18, had my first child at 19, my second one at 20, I'm 40 now. Um, my kids are grown, they're successful, they're doing their thing. I never dated any, any of any race after that. Um, I just kind of floated about the world and kind of did my own thing. But as I learn about myself, more about myself, I have no, um, I have no desire to date outside of my race. I've seen, I've been there, I've done that. I've seen, um, I'm on a very white island. Um, I've just recently moved back home to Arkansas to start my own farm. So I, th there's a lot of things that I do. I appreciate really being close to nature and just being with the man and just being all all up on him and being his and you know all those things i really love being a woman so i i don't know how to answer that question at the beginning i will say no i i think that you should be working on yourself i think that you should be worried less about being inside of a relationship and more about setting yourself up to a place to where you're comfortable as far as 50 50 goes i think that's subjective you have to know where people are because as i said i'm in a certain place and someone else might be in a certain place and believe it or not i've been with men that they absolutely don't want you to lift a finger they want you they don't want you to do anything i think there's a misconception that all men want you to be going 50 50 50 that's not true i've actually never been with a man who has asked me to be 50, do 50 50 ever i've never had to have the conversation um so I don't know. Um, I think this is all new. I think the internet has this thing um, where it's trying to shape our realities. It's not nothing real. I'm used to seeing real relationships. I'm used to seeing women hold it down, men hold it down, people surviving, trying to just get through, get by and be with each other. I'm not used to like people like picking, you know, are you the best? Are you the, you know, I mean, hop into reality. Do you want to be with somebody or not? <laughs> You know, um, I don't know. You know, it's it's all about what you want. I think people should be with who is best for them. I think the problem is, is you're a 50-50 person trying to be with a woman who would never want 50-50. That's the problem. Um, there's no problem with someone wanting to be with someone who wouldn't do 50-50. There's no problem with someone who wants to be with someone who is. The problem is, is when those two different people try to be together. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's um, for me, all this talk, for me, it's simple. Find someone for you who is willing to do it like you want to do it. You know, for me, I'm flexible. I've made my money. I've had, you know, I've got land. I've, you know, there's not a lot that a man can step up to me and say, hey, you know, I've got all this stuff. I probably wouldn't care, you know, because I have my stuff. But I am always, I'm always, um, looking at a person in life i want to know that you are really working on yourself i i did a lot of shadow work this this year so i'm understanding that there's things about myself that i might have projected onto um the man in my life and um once you you do that shadow work you realize hmm there's some things about me that i could have fixed that might have um made some of my, my relationships better but you got to come to that point in your life. I don't I don't know. I think the the 50/50 argument it feels new to me. It feels new and it feels like people just you you know what? Black women we're tired. You know, we're tired. We watch I watched my mother um my, my mother was on my mother was, you know, she did she did a lot of drugs. I I took care of my my brothers from the age of 12 to 18, my mother was in and out of, my mother went to prison for her husband for writing bad checks. He wrote bad checks, she went to prison for him. So I saw that, I saw my mother stab him in the arm. I saw, you know, lots of stuff. My grandmother went through stuff with her men. So I'm seeing that as a child and I'm taking note, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Sagittarius a Capricorn. I think that has, I'm half Sagittarius and half Capricorn. So I looked at all these things that I saw and I said, I don't want that. <laughs> and I went the other way. You know, I had 5.0, I was a cheerleader. I did, um, 
you know, like everything you could because I was running away from the stuff. You know, I was Miss NHS at my school. I did Miss Black Teen. I did I did all the stuff. You know, um, I got you know I had five scholarship offers, but I came from a very torrential home. So for me, it was all it was all about. I'm never getting with a man that's gonna cause me to be in that same position. So anytime I saw those behaviors inside of men, I said, no, I'm walking away. I'm out of here. <laughs> so um, what do I think about this whole thing? I think that men and women, we need to realize that we can heal each other. We've really gotten away from community. And back in the day, you know, a lot, you know, a lot of people have therapy now, but back in the day we had therapy because we had community. We didn't need to go out in therapy. We just kind of all helped each other, you know, and that's what's, that's the disconnect these days. And so we're up here having all these conversations about all these things that don't really matter. Um, it's a lot of semantics, you know, um, set your values, tell yourself what you want. And don't let anybody make you feel bad about what you want because my thing is based off the life that I had, I've told you a little snippet. Um, based off the life that I had, I either should not be here or, or definitely not be having the conversation about 50 50. I, by the time I've had, I'm 40, I am tired. <laughs> I, I don't want to take care of a man. That's my, that's my individual opinion. I, I would have did that in my twenties. I would have did that maybe even in my early 30s but i am not at the time i'm 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 tell you right now i'm revolutionary i broke my life down i had a huge store here the largest store i'm a black woman in a white town of 5000 um i had um a 2000 square foot store um i had a big life here let's put it that way i totally got rid of everything and moved back home so that i could have a simple a more simple life so i said i'm out of here i'm not doing this so i think I think that um, you change and you move and groove. I changed a lot. I changed a lot over COVID. And I was like, you know what? I want to have a flower farm. I'm a florist. I was a florist here. I do a lot of stuff. But I said, you know what? I want to do this for myself. I want to go back home. I want to take all the things I learned here. Like the, they have a really good community here. Farm to table. The people are, you know, they help each other. We take, we trade vegetables. All these things. I said, you know what? this is great, but my community back home doesn't have this. So let me take this back home. Um, so if I'm looking for a man, me, myself, he needs to be black. He needs to be unjabbed. He needs to be intelligent. He needs to be talking about revolutionary. I ain't talking about no voting for this person, that person. I don't care about none of that because it doesn't, it doesn't concern me. Um, I'm talking about, I need, I'm want to change things. I'm like, I'm tired of this old system. Get away, get away, get, get it out of here. You know? Yeah, sure. So I'm on that level. Let me ask you a question because you yeah. spoke to trauma and of course many of us have that right yeah i'm just wondering because you know as a therapist my mind is always connecting dots in people's experiences your choice to be with, with the caucasian men you dated do you think that was partly motivated by the early example you saw of black men mistreating the women in your life what's the question Did you did you go over, did you date white men because you saw black women who you cared about be abused by the black men they loved? Did that happen? No, no, I would have, I dated, it didn't matter to me. Um, that didn't affect me, actually. Uh, I dated white because I was in white spaces. Why um, did you dated white, though? Why did you date white? I was in white spaces. I, like I said, I was an AP student. I did all the things that the white kids did. did, did. No none of the black kids around me wanted to do the stuff that that um i was doing and it was only white kids i was always the only black kid in my ap classes um that's where you get a five instead of a four i i was in quiz bowl no one wanted to do that i played soccer i was a cheerleader no black kids the soccer team had a whole bunch of asians on it the you know so when i went to college it was more white people every situation i put myself in there was a lot of white people and I didn't do that because there was white people. The reason I'm asking you about the romance yeah. is I was educated in all white spaces myself. All three of my universities were predominantly white and the white girls were very much attracted. But of mm -hmm. course, I'm black queen. Look at, look, at, look at these comments. Look how sad it is. No, stay with me. Stay with me. Talking stay about stay trauma and all. No, stay focused. But even, <laughs> I was in, even though I was in those white spaces, 
I never dated out. And so right. I'm judging you, I'm just trying to understand. Well, I was 18, 18 and 19 and where I am now, I didn't know all, all the things. I was, I grew up in Arkansas. They don't teach you black history. They teach you Arkansas history. When I went to Texas, they teach you Texas history. I never learned anything past Martin Luther King and the regular stuff they teach us every day. They did not do any kind of, there was no black programs. There was no nothing. How am I supposed to know, you know, all these things I know now without living, you know? So I had to you're you not know, leave where I was. You're not huh? mixed race. You're no. not. Mm -mm. No. Okay. I got mm -hmm. you. I got you. Last. No, my family, my family is from Arkansas. Well, that I know from Arkansas, we have a lot of stuff in the line, but I mean, I'm black. I mean, I, I'm black. I'm black, you know. Last, um, what, what would you like to see differently from young black women? Of course, you're still a young black woman yourself. What do you think sisters need to do a little bit better as well when it comes to the dating and mating and procreating? Like I said, you know, I think we need to be working on ourselves. If we've had trauma, we need to heal from that. And I wish I would have did the shadow work before because I could have skipped a lot of things that I put myself through. Um, that's exactly what I did. I went back to Arkansas. Um, you know, I, I would definitely say to be able to heal, you know, um, because once you do heal, you can see a lot, you see a lot of things differently. And I did not heal until probably two years ago. I started the process of healing, you know, going back home, going and facing those things that happened to me as a child. I went to one of the women, she, I went into foster care when I was 14. I went to her, I said, why did you treat me that way? And she told me to leave it in the past. So I said, okay, and I sued her. And I got all the money that she should have given us back from when I was in foster care because you know what? Um, you told me leaving the past and I need to heal. So I did the best thing for myself and I healed. <laughs> That's how I healed. I got my, I got mine, you know, because, you know, and then I took that money and I helped other foster kids. So, you know, um, yes. you know, anybody that is getting in the way of my healing right now, you're going to get it. Anybody that did anything to me, I'm healing the way I want to heal. <laughs> thank, so, you that, thank you for tapping in, Queen. Appreciate the commentary. All right, sweet. God bless you. I need y'all to chill with the comments. I need y'all to chill with the comments. Where the Black Kings at? I need unapologetically African anti-Snow Bunny alpha males. Where are my unapologetically African anti-Snow Bunny alpha males? I need a brother. Let me go. Let me hit up B. Johnson. B. Johnson going once. B. Johnson going twice. B. Johnson going three times. Where you at, B? What's going on, brother? How what you up, doing? King? What up? Where you at in the world? H-Town, brother. H Houston. H-Town, Houston in the building. I'll be in Dallas on Saturday. So you, you've been hearing the commentary from the brothers and the sisters. Where do you stand on this 50-50 piece? Where do you stand on the 80% rule? Some sisters say if you ain't got 80% of the money to hold down the family, why are you looking to build one in the first place? Give me your opinion on this guy. So I got like two takes on it. Mm -hmm. um, I know some people that it does work for. Okay. Um, but I think that the, the biggest issue is this right here. When you're doing 50-50, you're still expecting a woman to do more than you. You expect mm -hmm. for you to go, you expect for yourself to go to work, come back home and be able to relax. But that's not how that works. If you're going to do 50-50 with a woman, be prepared to wash the dishes. Mm -hmm. Be prepared to cook. Be prepared to clean. Mm. Be prepared to wash the children up. Be prepared to do everything that she. Mm. You do In other words, you got to split down the middle too. Then you got to split that down too, because I actually have somebody that I know have they have this kind of relationship, and um, they said the reason why it works is because they do everything that the woman does. Like you don't burn the woman out. The woman uh. is able to come home. She able, like you picked up the children today. You dig what I'm saying? You picked up the children today. She went home. She showered. She cooked. You bring the children home. You get the children um, set up for homework and all that while she re while she relaxing. It's just like you got to put in a lot more work. Um, you just can't really expect a woman to That's do cool. all of You can't expect a woman to do all of that and then still be able to submit to you. She's going to be burnt out for real. 
Now, I will say that another, so brother's going to definitely have to step up from that aspect. Ain't no way you're going to be able to require all this from this woman. And Do it. you ain't put, gotta be you got to. I'm uh, mommy. Oh, yeah, man. You, you got to step up. You, you got to step up. You got to step up, too. So um, the second part about um, the 50-50, I think that um, financially, I think it makes sense. So um, I think that a two-parent, um, I mean, a two-income household, I think that you were able to have more freedom. You dig what I'm saying? You were able to spend more money on the weekends or even invest in a property to make y'all more money. I think it just make a lot more sense. Now, I will say that, I'm not interested in it. I, I'm going to throw that out there. Like, I'm not interested in a 50-50. In a That's just not what I'm into. Um, I'm an entrepreneur, and I was just saying that I believe that it can work with the right people, but you got to put the work in. Mm-hmm. You got to put the work in. That's strong. What's your take on that 80% rule? Uh, uh, what was it again? Just to say, some sisters say, if you can't take care of 80% of the bills, why are you looking to get married in the first place? Nah, man, that don't work. You dig what I'm saying? Like, if do it's like this right here. I don't think that you should come into a relationship where you're completely broke. But if this woman is okay and you okay, get together, build together. That 80 20, I mean, what you like at 80 20, what does it look like for the woman? Like, like, ask the woman, like, if I take care of 80%. And you running twenty? What are you doing? Like, is it just mm-hmm. we both working mm-hmm. and I'm paying eighty percent of the bills and you saving your money? Mm-hmm. What are you doing with your money? Like, what is your what is your money there for? Like, if mm-hmm. you just if you gonna save all your money, is this going into a shared bank account? Like, what's happening right here? Like, are you putting this into a personal bank account? Are you investing for your life mm-hmm. after me or something? Like, what's <laughs> happening here? Like, what we doing with the money that you got over here? You know what that's I mean? Up. So. I don't I don't think that that's realistic. Um, the sister that spoke earlier with the numbers and the, the statistics and and the facts, I, I agree with her as far as um, black women being more educated, you know, especially in these times and being able to make more money. So, you know, like they're going to have more money than most of the black men that, you know, that that wants to date black women. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, I believe that. I honestly believe that. Where you stand on the snow bunny prices? Have you ever dated outside the race? Would Absolutely you... not. Um, I say, I wouldn't tell you. I wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I'm not marrying no white woman. I'm not gonna sit up here. And I can't. I can't bring that home. Got my mama told my mama already told me that that's not. Yeah, that's not gonna fly. Got you. you can't. They don't even. Don't even try to sneak this one through the door. This ain't gonna fly. Oh, yeah. Like understand our history mm-hmm. of what we done been through. You can't. We ain't accepting that. I feel you. And when you look at us as black men, where do you? What, what's one or two things you think we need to do better about? Like, where are you disappointed at with us in relation to our women? Man, accountability um, and the disrespect. So I had this. I had this. Um, I actually had this conversation with some of my frat brothers um, two days ago. Um, I think that a lot of what's happening is when we don't have black fathers at home, we lean on rap music. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. We lean on rap music and all the rappers telling you to disrespect black women. So what you think we doing when we growing up? We ain't valuing no black woman. You literally got to, you being raised by, like, and I'm single parent household as well. And I was raised by my mom and my uncle, we, I pretty much was raised by the village. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm raised by my grandmother, aunts, uncles, like, everybody close-knit. Like, this this was my village, but I didn't have a father in the household. So when it comes to, when it comes to a situation like that, it's like um, we watching what's happening with, uh, with rap music. You know what I'm saying? And ain't nobody respecting black women. Mm. And uh, you know you got nobody out here respecting them. It's bitches and hoes, and this, you know what I'm saying? It's all day long, all day long. Then drill music and all this is just ain't nothing. It's nothing telling you to hey, respect that queen, marry that queen, yeah. be there for that queen. You don't got, you don't got that. And I mean, I feel like you should. I feel like somebody should be out here teaching that. But um, I will say that accountability is 
gonna be big for black men for sure. That's one of the things for sure. Give me one more. Um, I think that um, with black men, I think that we're gonna have to, we definitely gonna have to step into a greater role as far as how we are towards younger black men. I don't think that, um, I don't think that you should necessarily have to have like a, a connection with this person or something like that. If, if you're a black, a black man and there's a black boy somewhere doing something, he ain't got no business. You need to step up and let him know like, hey, bro, that, that ain't gonna fly, bro. That's right. You, sh you shouldn't be doing that. Like, we, and I don't go- Yeah, we don't police our own. Yeah, we don't police our own at all. And we, and literally we laugh about it. You you're still talking about, we talking about a community. We talking about a community that supports people coming home from prison before we support somebody that graduates from wow. from college. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you get more love coming home from the penitentiary than what you get when you graduate from college. That's true. And it's like, it's like, damn, like, y'all yeah. love do more, huh? Uh -huh. Like, so when you get that kind of praise, when you coming back home, we, we missing the biggest factor. Like when I grew up, like legit, and I'm from Houston, I grew up in A-Lee and I actually lived in the country as well. And I could tell you that in both of these places, it was completely different. But one thing that I was all the same is we glorify going to the penitentiary. Mm. I'm telling you, like from youngsters, from being young and manipulated, yeah. we glorify going to prison and going to jail. Like just talk to anybody. It's still going on today. It like is. nobody look at like, I'm be honest with you. I got my little brother locked up right now. I love him to death. You know what I'm saying? And I'm never going to speak on him in a negative way. But me and him have like real conversations. Like, like I have real conversations with people that are still in prison right now. And I tell them like, listen, like, you know, bro, they tricked the shit out of us. Like they tricked us. You know what I'm saying? They really, they sat there and they tricked us and we ate that shit up. Now you locked up in the penitentiary and you, you want to come home. Like, and I know you want to come home and you got children that want to see you because they really, really love you. But we've been manipulated into believing that this shit was what it was and it never was really that. Like, the co that's the culture. That's black culture when you get to talking about young black men. Like, you ain't getting no respect when you young until you go to the penitentiary. Mm -hmm. You got to go to jail first. Like, you got to mm -hmm. go to jail first. Like, ain't nobody giving you, ain't nobody giving you no respect until you go and you got to go lock up in this jail cell. Go lock up and catch a fade. That's like, that's real deal. That's, and I've noticed that that's all over. That ain't just Houston. Man. It that is. is. That's, that's all over the place. And until you get to a point in time, like I have to tell my brother, like, I'm like, bro, I'm gonna be honest with you. Being locked up with some lame ass shit, bro. Like, that's some lame ass, like, I got shit to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I own a transportation business. And I remember, some a time some time ago i got arrested and um man i was i probably was in there for like 20 days and all i was thinking about the whole time is like bro i'm never getting these 20 days back this is some bullshit. i could have made some money right. today that's i could have right. i could have grew in this way could have read this book today that's 20 days it's completely gone like they're just completely gone you'll never get that shit back never Wow, that's real, man. Thanks for tapping in, King. Good commentary. I got a question for you, though. Sure. So this is my question to you. Um, as far as your school go, Frederick, Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey School? Yes, sir. Serious question. I want a real answer. So why do you believe you haven't been able to, um, to, uh, to receive the funding for the school? Do you believe that the black millionaires and billionaires, they're not able to give you the money because of the contracts that they under with the higher ups or whatever, or do you believe they don't support you? Um, I think it's a mix. I definitely think that they're afraid of the association because most of them have Caucasian handlers, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I think they're afraid of the association because you got to remember when you're in show business as a black person, that entire industry is dominated by Caucasians. And you have to always appear likable to white people in order to be successful. There's no celebrity you know of who doesn't ingratiate themselves to white folks in order to stay where they are. 
rappers, ba basketball, football, comedian, actor, they all have to stay in the good graces of Caucasians. So mm -hmm. a lot of them have to keep their distance from me publicly, even if we cool privately, because they don't want to muddy their reputation. It's the same reason why agents tell the black athletes, get you a white girl, you might get more deals. You get you a black girl, a lot of the companies that want to sign you up, they ain't going to be rushing to do that. You know, Nike may not be running to you if you get that chocolate sister with the locks, but if you get the snow bunny with the blonde hair and blue eyes, it might go a little further. I think the same thing happens in the revolutionary world where our celebrities are told to kind of stay away from brothers like me who are on the grassroots doing the work. But I don't really mind it though, because if they were to give me a lump sum of money, they're probably going to expect me to go along with some things they do that I don't agree with. So in the end of the day, I like it the way we have it because when we do open up, I'm not beholden to nobody. And so I appreciate the freedom that comes from them not having helped us out. But to your question, we okay financially with the small school. We don't have any money for the high school. So we're going to have to do a whole new fundraiser for that. But for the small school, we good. What took us so long was not the money. It was finding dependable black contractors. We, I heard about that. Yeah, we were hustled and scammed by every black contractor we used, bro. Nobody we paid did the money we paid them to do, did the work we paid. Not even the painter, bro. Not even the painter did the work he got paid. Electricians didn't do the work. No black contractor did us right, bro. Not one of them in four years. So that's when we decided last year, we just going to get the Caucasians to finish this up, which is what we had to do. We had to pay them to finish it up. They overcharged us, but they finished the work, though. So right now, we just got to do the floors, bro. Once we get these floors done, we applying for the certificate, and we should be ready to open up. So we at the finish line now for the small school. But like I said, for the high school, we got to start over again because we ain't, we ain't got no money for the high school. Well, I appreciate you for what you're doing for our Bye. community. You know, I know uh, I know that's tough to actually do something oh, for specifically sure. for our people. Yes, and I know the support ain't always as great as yes. you would like for it yes. to be. But, man, you're doing great work in the community, and we love Thanks. you for that. Can I, get your, can I get that number to text you at? I heard you say 215-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-989-
Instagram shut it down as Tom Queen. But I'm going to have you take it from the top. Where do you okay. see 50 50 piece and doesn't make a difference if he's a, man's of, a man of means or if he's not a man of means? I think um, from the beginning of the relationship, we have to have a conversation on what we both agreed to do and not do. Um, once we had that conversation, um, I'm okay with 